G'day guys, Ronnie Dale here. We have the Hilux out for its first shakedown trip. We've done a few minor modifications to it, nothing major, so it's relatively still stock. No lift, we're just gonna see where we get up to and where we end up. But we also have Torben's 79 series Land Cruiser behind me as a backup vehicle. The Hilux definitely doesn't sound as good as that. Here we are on our way down south. We're going to an area we've been to before quite a few times. It's called Jaeger Up. And the other section is called Call Cup Hill. Some people call it Cow Cup Hill. We're gonna test the Hilux out as it is. Now it's fairly stock. We have rock sliders on it, hard lid on the back, and we also have uh, all-terrain tires with rims, 17 inch rims, that's it. That's all we got, so it is very stock. We've hit the gravel road now, heading down. There is a particular rocky sort of river crossing that we're gonna cross, we're taking a long cut to take a shortcut, if that makes sense. Just to test the Hilux out. Now hopefully it's not too deep so I don't chicken out because I've got no snorkel and uh, I've got no lift either and there are some rocks in the bottom but I'm pretty confident this will be fine. Shouldn't be too deep. Hey Torbs, I reckon we just pull up here and air down uh, just a little bit and we air down again we get to the sand I reckon. So what tyre pressures are you going to do now? That's a very good question. All terrain tyres, new vehicle. What am I going to do? You know what, I might just go down to 18. We'll see how that goes. As for Torben's tyre pressures, he's got 22 in the front and 25 on the rear. And had I had my Land Cruiser here with me as well, I would have gone the same pressure. But I don't, because I'm driving the Hilux. A stock Hilux. Currently traversing through the Warren National Park and soon we'll be entering the Don Tricastro National Park. It's a bit of a tongue twister that one. Don Tricastro. Here we are Torps. There's a river crossing. A little bit of a rut here. Oh the Amasaka do with a good wash on both of our cars. I'm gonna pull up down here though and have a look first. Probably should have let you go first to be honest. Here we are, the first crossing for the Hilux, the first official river crossing. I know this river very well, but I'm gonna give you a couple of tips right now, especially with a stock vehicle. Number one, with any vehicle, rivers, check the flow. You should really walk it, unless you're in croc country. Polarized sunglasses helps you see the bottom of the actual river bed. This one, like I said, I know very well, so I'm not gonna bother walking it. I'm just gonna drive straight through. It doesn't look too deep. The flow is okay for here, but flow is something you need to check. You can see the bubbles on top. Sometimes there's no rocks around to cause this bubble effect, so you have to really walk it to see how much it's flowing. The rule of thumb is if you can't walk it, you shouldn't drive it. 
because picture that that amount of force of water on your entire leg picture that half side of your vehicle your vehicle is a massive surface area you could get swept away and then that's no fun aside from that there are many other factors involved in river crossings and i will endeavor to make that content in a dedicated video but for now i'm selecting second gear low in my automatic transmission going straight across a little bit deep in that hole. as you may have noticed i do not have a snorkel and I also do not have extended diff breathers. These are two things I need to address. I don't have a fridge, but I do have a rather large ice box and that's how I'm getting by on this trip. Torbs is making lunch right now. Oh, continental wraps. You want a beer Torbs? Yeah, why not? And it's beer o'clock. And then we'll hit up Jaeger up. Jaeger up dunes. See how this thing goes on the sand. We'll definitely need to lower the tire pressure a little bit more. Cheers, bud. Dig in. <laughs> here we are at Jaeger Up Entry. This is the gatekeeper. If you can't make it up here, you're going to be in trouble. If you struggle to get up this one, you're really going to struggle to come off the beach later. The hardest part about the entry to Jaeger Up June is these what we call wombat holes. These are usually caused by people not lowering their tyres enough and giving it too much right foot. Car starts to bounce, you lose all your momentum, you just dig in, game over. You have to go back, start again, and every time you do it, it gets worse and worse. The cool thing about Jaeger up dunes and sand dunes in general, you can see they're slowly encroaching in on the vegetation. So slowly they're taking over the trees, meter by meter, every four years. Enough of that, time to test the Hilux on the entry and we are starting with 15 PSI. It's so badly chopped up, eh? The Hilux made it up in one go, which is great, but I'm not convinced. It bounced a lot more than the Land Cruiser and I think it could do better. So I'm going to give it another shot at 15 PSI. And I'm not the only one that had higher expectations. I reckon this Hilux will do it with ease. Got good tyres, low pressure, auto helps. Now having a very light back end on the vehicle, that's usually where you get most of the bunny hopping, is on, is on the back. So weight does help in some situations, and other situations, you know, it all changes. Tell you what, I just come through that bit you're driving now, and I thought I was going to shake the body off the car. A bit better. It's really catching those humps though. 15 psi is definitely too much for this light vehicle, so we're going to drop it down to 11 and see how we go. There we go. Heaps better. Otherwise, those holes catch me out. That's just the way it is. Let's just state the facts here. Driving up this those big whoop de doo holes, if you get caught in that rhythm, which I did the first couple of times, you just won't make it up, or you won't make it up comfortably. 31 and a half inch tires, very light back end, I found I had to give it a bit of momentum heading up. So I'm definitely looking at maybe putting 
a steel rear bar on this just to put a bit of weight in the back. It's, it's, it sounds funny. I actually want to put more weight on the rear. So what have we learned here? Well, previously I had highway terrain tyres and now I have AT tyres, which are off-road tyres, stronger sidewall. They require about four PSI less than the highway terrains to get the same kind of footprint and ride. Now let's compare that to Torben's vehicle. Torben's big, heavy Land Cruiser. Heavy, 16 PSI front, 18 PSI rear. Comparatively, I need 11 PSI in my light Hilux to have the similar comfort ride on sand and flotation as he does. That's what we learned today. So we're heading for a beach camp, right? No, we're turning around and this is why. And we spoke to one of the locals and found out that the uh, river is impassable, which sucks. So we all made a decision. We're going to uh, turn around and head to our favourite camp spot, which is just outside the National Park, not far from Cork Cup Hill. And tomorrow we'll uh, test out the Hilux on Cork Cup. And that'll be enough for sand. And then we're going to head inland and try some different stuff. But so far, the Hilux isn't doing too bad. But the cruiser's definitely got it up on it. We are back down and we're going to be driving through the dark a little bit. Which uh, is going to be fun with no driving lights. In darkness we find camp, right? We're not far from camp. I'm actually really tired because I struggle to see with the lighting that I have which yeah you know, it's not bad to be honest but out in the bush oh man i need lights now torbs his lights i'm very envious right now he's got more light than my other cruiser compared to this is ridiculous but i have a secret weapon <laughs> this is so not practical it's pretty obvious I need driving lights. If you are going to spend time driving around in the bush at night time for long stretches at a time, you need driving lights. Unless of course you enjoy eye strain and headaches. In darkness we found camp and here is my very simple setup. All I have with me is my Hilux, a swag, a ground sheet, a billy on the fire, you always gonna have a billy on the fire, and a hot plate which I'm not using tonight, and my ice box. That is it. That's all you need. It's not as flash as Torben's setup with a stretcher and lights and all that stuff. That's all comfort. That's stuff you can build on your setup as you go. But do not let this full process of not having the gear stopping you from getting out there. Grab what you have, go out, have some fun. And from there, build on your setup. I can already tell you where I do need a couple of lights. Let's check it out. As you can see, it's very dark. I'm thinking some lighting up inside here will go nicely just to light all this up, but it definitely needs to be a white and red combo, red and white combo, so we don't attract all the bugs. Because I reckon if I have a strip light up here, this will light this whole platform up here, I could put a stainless steel top here, I guess, and I could prep food here. Torps again, cool cup hill. This place is so much fun. 
Real keen to see how the Lux goes up this. We're halfway down now. As you can see, this is a massive hill. Very intimidating. And you can see every single section, people have, some people have failed hey, to come dude, up. dude, your haircut matches the surf. <laughs> Gnarly dude. <laughs> totally closed out, man. Oh dear. So far on this trip, I've been using this GME uh, suction cupped radio. I don't even know what number it is. I think it's the only one I have. It's like a portable one. It's mag magnetized to the roof with a wire going outside the vehicle. And it works a little bit better than a handheld. The only thing is, I don't know where to mount this. You do get a little handpiece with it, but uh, the sticky stuff I don't have anymore because it's been in a few vehicles. So I really need some 3M tape so I can stick this somewhere because this is just bouncing around. Speaking of bouncing around, we're about to bounce around on this chopped up entry track to the beach. No tango. Torben's turn to show us how it's done in his V8 Land Cruiser. Alright, let's look at the facts here. Torben, more power bigger tyres, bigger footprints, and also he's heavy, so he keeps the vehicle on the ground. Here we go again. My Hilux jumps around. The only thing that I can do is lower my tyre pressures even more and see how that goes. Yes. There you go. I made it. First go? Yeah, first go after changing tyre pressures. So what do you think my tyre pressures are down to Torps? Looking at it, I reckon the front's probably around 6 and the back's about 8. They look really low. 8 and 7. Wow. It was 11 and 9 but after a couple of attempts it heated up and that was actually on 13 and that was on 11. Wow. It heated up by 2 psi. So I was pretty close. On the beach, it was an absolute dream to drive, especially down there. It was at 8 psi on the front, 7 psi on the rear. It just glid. It handled so well. It felt like I was driving on pillows, yet it felt like I still had uh, control, like I was on... I was on like a train track. It didn't want to fishtail around or anything. It just sat there really well. And your crews are so loud, eh? Your crews are so loud. So if you do change your tyres on your vehicle from highway terrain to all terrain, be prepared to spend a day testing tyre pressures. You know, you can always start high and then go lower and lower and lower. It's good to learn the limitations of your vehicle and that's exactly what I did. And look, even 15, 20 years full driving, I'm still surprised at the difference when I got so low on tyre pressure because this vehicle is so light, so light. I didn't think I'd be able to go that low and still not be touching the bottom, like not have a flat. If I went that pressure on my Land Cruiser, my rims would be touching the bloody ground. And here we are at the Warren River mouth, and this is the end of our beach run. Two things. 
my tyres are scrubbing a little bit. The other thing, this is what the local was telling us about. We can't cross because the warren has broken its banks. Now it may look shallow there, but we just witnessed a few guys try and cross it on foot before and they sank below knee deep. The problem is you probably could cross it. That is the most likely spot of crossing it. But if you get that wrong, you're stuck. The waves are right there. And no one's crossed it for quite a while. So I would deem this uncrossable at this, at this stage. Even at low tide, there'll be a channel. It would have channeled right out. So it'll be like a bit of a V gully and you get stuck there, it's like quicksand. Wow. Time for a good old tailgate lunch, and then we hit up Cork Up Hill. Here we are at the launch pad. I love this place. We'll see how this thing goes. I reckon you'll be all right. I reckon I will be all right too. Over there I learnt my tyre pressures. <laughs> yeah, zero. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. No. no. It looks so flat. Seven and eight no, that's PSI. A, uh, that's only seven and eight off zero. I reckon I'll make a bonhole beach like this. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. You go first, I reckon. All right. See how it goes. Torps got caught out by the hill, but I guarantee you he will not mess about on his second attempt. you do it second high it's amazing how well the big engine just handles it coming up so that was fun a bit of noise that all under control that was fun I want to go do it again Woohoo! pressure's on Let's get this Hilux up in one hit, no re-attempts, and let's get one up that bloody Land Cruiser. Good. 
We're up. First go on the Hilux. First go on the first part, first go on the second part. I'm satisfied. I know what the tyres are like now. We ended up with eight in the rear. No, sorry, seven PSI on the rear, eight in the front. So we're now gonna go out of here, air up, and head to our next destination. Hopefully find some rocks. We'll see how we go with time because we have somewhere else to be in a couple of days time to do some other cool stuff. All right, we better mosey on then. A snatch, mate. Oh, get out of here. We're running out of daylight, and I don't have enough time to drive around and have a bit of fun here, so I'm just going to go straight for the hard stuff here, see how we go. I may be reversing down in a matter of five minutes. <laughs> Let's see. Before we just rush straight into this, we are down to 15 PSI. Let's see how we go. I'm committed now. That's the bottom. Uh, I reckon there will be a bit of scraping when it gets here. Shouldn't get any panel damage, but there will be a bit of rubbing underneath, that's for sure. Time to back out. Obviously, I didn't have the clearance with the tire size and also with my lift. Even a lift kit is not going to help me too much here because I'm diffing out the underbody's catching. Scratches and scrapes happening here. So, how do we improve the Hilux to be able to do deep ruts like this? Well, it's quite simple really. Lift it up with a suspension lift, fit bigger tires. That's the only way. Bigger tyres is the answer, as Torx will show you right now. As you saw, there are some limitations to the Hilux, and watching Torben go up, it's just point and shoot. 35 inch tyres versus 31 and a half inch tyres, there's a big difference there. Look, if we did put 33s on, on the Hilux, I reckon it would have done most of that stuff, even without a lift, but then you wouldn't fit the tires without a lift. So the whole idea here is to show you guys what you can do without a lift. Your face kind of looks unsure. I'm gonna do it. You're gonna do it? Yeah. On tough tracks like this, there are always more than one line. I found one through the middle. Now, I wasn't gonna be defeated by not making it to the top. So look, every four wheel drive is different. Torps took that track. I'm going to make it to the top, taking the middle track. Well, I hope so. All right, so if you get stuck, we're going to be here all night. Yeah. Yeah. But if I get up, I'll be happy and off we go to camp. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be camping about an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Either way, it's going to be pitch black. Yeah. Pretty happy with that. 
very happy with that actually. That was fun. The conclusion on the trip with the Hilux, the Hilux Shakedown. How did it go? Sand, ruts, engine, seating, comfort, storage, all the things we can discuss will be in a different video because this one is already becoming too long. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, and stay tuned for the full conclusion and the direction of where I'm taking this Hilux. Stay tuned. See you next time.